Our kind Heavenly Father, give us wisdom as we study thy word today. Speak to my heart and speak through these lips of clay to the unseen in the radio audience. Father, I can't see them, but thou dost know every person who listens today, and thou dost know the need of every heart. And I pray that you'll bless as only God can in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm reading today a portion of God's Word that I've never used on the radio the 26 years almost that I've been preaching on the radio. In Psalm 8, I read, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, I'm stopping at the fifth verse, Psalm 8. I'm using today the question asked in verse 4, what is man? What is man? Now, that's the subject for this broadcast today. Have you ever stopped and asked yourself, what is man? What am I, man? Now, I want to mention, as time permits, some three or four, I don't know just how many I'll get in, but three or four, maybe five, things about man. First of all, I want to say in the true scriptural analysis of man, man by nature or in nature is an indestructible spirit. Man is a spirit that cannot nor shall ever be destroyed 50 billion 50 trillion years from this moment you my dear individual will be living just as surely as you are alive now you will not be in a body such as you are in now but my kind friend you are an indestructible spirit whether you are male or female now, you're created in the image of Almighty God. That's what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis 1, 27. The Bible clearly sets forth that we are created in the image of Almighty God. Read James 3, 9. James 3, 9. And you will discover also that man is eternal. Now, I know, I know there are religions and I'm sure there are individuals listening to my voice today who do not agree with the statement I've just made. There are those who preach annihilation. There are those who preach eternal annihilation of the wicked. They preach, of course, everlasting life for the righteous, but eternal, damn the, uh, eternal annihilation for the wicked. And yet the same identical Hebrew and Greek words are used for everlasting life and everlasting destruction. Yet these one-sided religionists preach an everlasting bliss, everlasting joy, everlasting peace, everlasting life for the righteous and soul annihilation for the wicked. Now, let's be reasonable and let's be consistent and let's not preach a one-sided gospel to please a religion or a program. If life everlasting awaits the righteous, then eternal damnation, damnation without end, awaits the wicked. Man is an indestructible spirit. You will never cease to exist. You will never cease to be. The eternity that lies ahead will hold your spirit either in the regions of the damned or in the celestial glory of the Almighty God. Might as well face it. You're created in the image of God. God is everlasting. And whether you live or die, whether you're saved or unsaved, you are an eternal spirit. 
Now, Brother Green, do you have any scripture to prove the statement you've just made? Now, I don't have time to discuss it, beloved. That's another sermon. But I feel constrained in my heart to point you again to the sermon of Jesus in Mark 9. Now, the hottest and the clearest sermon you'll ever hear on hell and eternal judgment was preached not by some fanatical evangelist, not by some religionist, but by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And in Mark 9, beginning with verse 43, you'll read that the Lord Jesus Christ believed and taught and preached everlasting torment for the wicked. He says, if your hand offends you, cut it off. It's better to enter the kingdom of God one hand than have two hands and go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and where the fire is not quenched. Now, verse 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and 48 refer to the time when the worm will never die and the fire will never be quenched. Now, Jesus preached everlasting fire, everlasting hell, everlasting damnation, and the spirit of man will never die. Whether you're saved or lost, you are an eternal spirit. You are an indestructible spirit. You are created in the image of God, and God is a spirit, and God has always been, and God always will be. God will never cease to exist. Neither will you, my dear listener, ever cease to exist, whether you're saved or whether you're lost. Now, in the second place, man without God is dead in trespasses and in sin. What is man? What is man? There goes a man down the sidewalk right now. As you listen to my program, maybe some of you are at home, maybe some are in automobiles, maybe some uh, by chance, maybe listening uh, in a place of business, I don't know. But nevertheless, there goes a man, there goes a lady. What is that man? What is that woman? Without God, they are a walking corpse. Paul said to the Galatians, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. In Ephesians 2, one, two, three, and on down. He said, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sin. Dead in trespasses, dead in sin. You say, preacher, I hope I won't be lost. You won't. You won't. You're lost now. If you're not saved, you're lost now. There's only one heartbeat between you and hell. Just one heartbeat, that's all. You're lost now. Where's your proof? He that believeth on him, Jesus, is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned, A-L-R-E-A-D-Y, already. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now that's John 3.18, if you'd like to read it. John 3 and verse 18. Now here's another verse, hear it. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The wrath of God abideth on him. Not going to abide, not will abide, not will fall upon him at death, but he that believeth not the wrath of God abideth on him this very moment. I read to you John 3.18 and John 3.36. John 3.18 and John 3.36. Now, man without God, man in sin is dead. Dead in trespasses and in sin. Man without God is a walking corpse. And when death overtakes physically, then death will begin spiritually in the lake of fire or in hell, and then at the consummation of all things, death and hell and all the wicked, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet will be consigned to the lake of fire that burns with brimstone, and they'll be tormented day and night forever and forever. So, man is an indestructible spirit. Man without God is dead in trespasses and sin. Not going to be, but is already dead 
in trespasses and in sin. Now then, man in Christ is a son of God, redeemed by the blood, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ, sealed until the day of redemption, led by the Holy Spirit, and praise God, man in Christ has joy unspeakable, indescribable, and full of glory. Preacher, where do you get all that? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, a double L. All things have become new. Now, in Christ, man is no longer dead in sin. Man is a new creation. Man is a new being, created in Christ Jesus, created a son of God by the miracle of the Spirit of God and the power of the Word of God. Man in Christ is redeemed. He is purchased. He is bought. And praise God, he has been liberated by the blood of Jesus from all iniquity. 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from a double L, all, a double L, all sin. Hallelujah. Now then, I said man in Christ is a son of God, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Jesus. I read the scripture. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Not going to be, but we are this moment. Man in Christ is God's son now. Not going to be, but now, this moment, we are God's children. Read on. And if children, verse 17, if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may be glorified together. Sons of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and beloved, it is present tense, we are the sons of God now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he, Jesus, shall appear, we shall be like him. 1 John 3, 1, 3. 1 John 3, 1, 3. In Christ, we are sons of God. In Christ, we are heirs of God. In Christ, we are joint heirs with Jesus. In Christ, we are sealed until the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30, Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Hallelujah. Praise God. Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. So in Christ we are the sons of God, redeemed, hallelujah, and covered by his precious blood. Now then, in Christ, we, that is man, I'm talking to man, every man, all men, male and female, if you are in Christ, you have a heavenly guide within your bosom. If you are in Jesus, you are directed from on high. You have a power that leads you that the world knows nothing about. I read Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. All of God's children have within their bosom the Holy Ghost. Where did you get that, Mr. Green? Romans 8, 9. Romans 8, 9. I read it. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 5. All right. 
Now then, if you are in Christ, dear sir, dear lady, if you are a child of God, you have the power of God within to guide you. You are led by the Spirit. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Are you listening? In Christ, we do not fight our battles alone. In Christ, we do not plan our path alone. In Christ, we do not conquer sin alone. In Christ, we are led and guided and directed by the Holy Ghost that abides in our bosom if we're born again. Now, let me review just a little bit. Man is an indestructible spirit. You will be living in heaven or hell 50 trillion years, 50 trillion, hundreds of trillions of years from this moment. You will exist either in the paradise of God or in the terrible lake of fire. Next, in sin, man is dead. Next, in Christ, we are sons, hallelujah, right now, redeemed heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Then, in Christ, we have a leader. We have a guide, the Holy Ghost, who abides within our bosom, and he leads us into the paths of right living for the glory of our God. Now then... In Christ, and I close because my time is running out. In Christ, hallelujah, we have every need supplied. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things, all these things, all needs, spiritual, mental, financial. My mind goes across radio land. And I think of the thousands of precious friends who've stood by me in the hour of need. And beloved, if it had not been for my friends, God only knows where I'd be today. But God has given me friends, friends who listen to God, and God speaks to my friends, and my friends have been so precious to me. God works through people, and I'm glad I'm a member of the family of God. I'm glad I'm a member of the household of faith. In Christ, my needs, yea, all of my needs are supplied. Hallelujah to his precious name. Now, the thing that I want to drive home in the closing moment of my sermon today is this. You are an indestructible spirit. You will never cease to exist. Are you in Christ or out of Christ? Are you saved or lost? If you're lost, God help you this moment to bow your head and call on God and let God save you. And if you'll call on Jesus and trust him with all of your heart, he'll save you. He'll wash your sins away. He'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then you can say, I am in Christ. I'm a son of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Praise his precious name. Bow your head. Receive Jesus and he'll save you this very moment. Father, honor the precious word of God. I pray that you'll honor the precious scripture that I've tried to send out today. Speak to the man or the woman, the boy or the girl that's nearest hell and save them, our Father, and we'll praise you in Jesus' precious, powerful, saving name. Amen.